Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how I paint this beautiful view from Kiev, Ukraine, where I visited with friends, I think about a year ago. Um, and the time of year was really nice. There was a bit of snow, but it also the weather was already getting uh, a little nicer. This picture was taken against the light, so all the things that come along with it, I'm gonna talk about in just a few moments. Um, but I think it's a lovely uh, view and a lot of large, clear shapes and nice contrast. Okay, so with that being said, let's get to painting this. So let's get started, and uh, I wanna talk a bit about the drawing stage here. What I focused on mainly here is because it's against the light, all the shapes kind of flatten, so you get large shapes of uh, different values. So the main focus here I wanted to show was these buildings in the background, this building on the right, and the street, and a bit of the balcony of the, with the little that you see off the balcony of where we stay. Uh, I will include a higher resolution picture in the description so you can draw it the same way I did. This is basically a one point perspective. Now if you see the horizon lines a little crooked and there's a reason for that, uh, and that is because the entire street uh, is at an angle, okay? So it's a bit of a different one. You don't usually see these types of angles. Now I'm gonna get started with painting this. Um, I have a slight angle a slight slope uh, on the, the, the papers at, okay? Uh, and this is gonna be a fairly easy first wash. I'm gonna cover the whole thing up, starting with blue, cool, and then move on to warm and, and more yellow, okay? It's the types of washes that I quite honestly enjoy doing the most. So I'm gonna get started here, keeping things fairly light, and you see I mix a lot of paint, a lot of water to get it moving and to keep it fresh, okay? Um, you wanna make sure that the paint flows properly, um, I'm actually gonna darken the sides just a bit, like that, to add a bit of interest to the sky and uh, have that uh, center light that you see in the reference photo as well, uh, that I think looks really nice, like that. Um, you're always kind of in a hurry when uh, using watercolor, it's just um, part of the medium's properties, you wanna make sure that you get good flow and so that's at least me. Now I'm gonna start switching and changing up the color a bit. So this goes into some um, neutral kind of gray red values, but now I'm gonna crank up the yellow. So plenty of yellow here and start using it. But here is where it gets really important because I have to start leaving highlights, okay? So I'm gonna try and leave bunch of random ones here. You can't really control it that much at this size, it's not a big piece. Um, and also with the amount of, just a huge amount of details in the reference itself. So what I'm gonna do is just my best at keeping a lot of highlights, car rooftops, all sorts of small details like that. Uh, and hopefully it will connect um, into something that, that looks good, reads well, and is interesting, okay? Now the closer we get, the easier it becomes to truly uh, preserve the right highlight. So you see the, the closer we get, this is all in the shadow, so I'm gonna cover the whole thing up. But here we got the bus, we got the, the cars that are a little closer. We have this part of the balcony, let's get rid of that. And I love this, this is the larger uh, Skoda brush Ultimo Synthetico. Uh, what I love about it is you can get both the thick uh, thick brush marks and also the very thin ones, so that's really useful for these kinds of things. Uh, and really good water capacity as well. So I'm gonna paint around the highlights here. Now what you wanna do when you're, while you're doing that is to not lose track of the overall scene, okay? Because if you look at the road, um, it does have some variation in value that I don't know if I want to capture but it could be beneficial to capture. So let me actually rethink this and figure out how I want to approach this. Here we have a couple of cars that are a little closer again. So you wanna make sure you're a little more accurate with these. Um, this is gonna be highly impressionistic as you can probably tell. Um, so I'm fine with cutting some corners when it comes to that. But, um, but other than that, I do try and get the overall feeling here. Now this part, the sidewalk's a little darker. That's the type of nuances you wanna pay attention to. A little burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm gonna have, as always, a list of the materials down below. And also, as I said, a, a high uh, resolution scan of the drawing stage, okay? Because I skipped that here. Car rooftop, going around that. 
We have a bit of a strange highlight here. I'm just gonna get rid of that. I honestly don't know what it is. So sometimes when I don't know what something is, I won't even try to uh, really paint it or draw it because it will come off a little strange because I don't know what it is. Uh, car around that. So a fairly simple initial wash, depending on how you look at it. If you truly look at it as just one continuous shape with highlights, can get much simpler. Uh, so now, um, let me think if I want to darken something now. I think it's. I think we're good. This, this, there's a good combination of values. We're gonna let it dry and then come back with the next washes. So the initial wash has dried now. I want to talk to you about something very common in my processes and I see in other artists' processes as well. And that is, uh, there's kind of a um, set uh, work process that for the first wash I use more colors and then for the second one I try to mute uh, the color of the shadows a bit. So we're gonna go with that because that I find works really well. Now my goal here is not to go too dark. Uh, I want to keep this uh, as light as I can and also to, to get a really nice muted color. Let me test this one out here. And it's gonna be a fairly quick uh, painting process compared to what we've seen in, in recent videos at least. Let me just use a nice French ultramarine burnt sienna combo and see what we get. Okay, I think this will be good actually. Uh, so I'm gonna get started with uh, the, the... You know what? I think we'll get started actually here. Uh, I considered leaving that to the next wash, but let's actually just get started here. And you see this is fairly watery because uh, I do want the paint to move, I do want to have good flow. I do want to keep the impression here fairly um, loose, fun, um, and for me that's a good way of doing that. Now here's the thing, the balcony has its shape that's separate with the buildings, but because we're now in the light stage, I'm gonna connect the two, okay? So I'm literally just connecting this part with the buildings in the background. Now here, this entire shape in the center, it doesn't matter at all, but what matters is the edges. So I'm, I want to get some interest in there. So I'm making sure I'm putting in all those small details that suggest um, a different architecture, styles, if you will. Um, I think one thing that I really noticed in Kiev, this is in, in uh, Ukraine, uh, was the, the, what do you call it, the monumental size of the buildings. They're all just huge huge buildings uh, and it's one thing that I knew based on the pictures I took there already that I would like to convey uh, in some paintings soon. Um, I knew that that's the kind of thing I want to show because that's something that makes uh, this city for me at least unique. I know it's not necessarily unique when you look at you know European architecture but for me personally uh, it's one of the the only cities that I really saw that kind of a thing going on. Um, the other places I got to visit in Europe weren't really like that. Like not at least not to that extreme you know like really uh, tall uh, huge monumental buildings. Um, so just a bunch of small highlights and spaces even more the closer we get to the quote-unquote horizon line. Now I know I'm a bit far away but hopefully you can see all of the details. Now here's a good place to stop the wash because near the street level um, there are just plenty of highlights and we can stop it and move on to this building. Okay, Because I want to make sure that I get that too. Now the windows have a lot of um, places where they reflect some of the sunlight but I'm probably gonna disregard that and make the building a little more interesting just by adding these small details in. Probably I'm gonna need a bit more paint, a bit more water and keep this moving. Now you can play within the building and, and create some interest with warm and cools. Um, I'm not gonna do that here because I already set the, the tone to be kind of same uh, color for all of the all of the background and buildings. Notice how thin of a line I can get with this uh, Skoda brush. It's just perfect. Um, and get this line all the way down, fill in the building. Um, here I have to be a little careful because there are some details. Actually there's another building here. And then there's a nice little angle like that. Uh, it's probably for another building and I like that so I'm gonna preserve it. Now here I do want to get a little darker 
as I get to the base of these buildings. I'm just going to put in some wet and wet darker value here and there. Um, get this section a little darker, just a bit. Now here it, it gets tricky because we get to the street and there's actually quite a lot of cars here um, within the shadow. But let me let's go over this entire thing because even the highlights on these cars are so light that I don't think I'll even need to leave it, you know, based on this wash at least. I'm just gonna leave. Let's cover the whole thing up. Let's cover it up and make it even more interesting by adding another shadow or two like that. I see uh, Alvaro Castaneda does that a lot and it works really nicely, so why not give it a try? Here goes a bit of wet and wet, like that. Maybe this will be a good way of indicating there are some cars here, I don't know. Uh, also for this building, there's this thing here in the middle. This is still very wet, so uh, you'd probably not want to touch that too much, but let me take a risk here and see. Yeah, so the paint still moves quite a bit. Um, I'll just put a few and then let it dry and then put some more. We do have some shadows here within the shadow and now notice I'm putting in some warm um, burnt sienna shadows here. So this is pretty much it for the, the largest shape of this painting probably. Now we can warm it up a bit. I'm just adding a bit of uh, yellow to this mix and I'm gonna start working my way around these shapes here. So. The formula I'm following is basically a shadow under a highlight. Why? Because all of these cars here in the background, in the distance, they all have this highlight on their rooftop, this kind of a very common thing you'd see, and then a shadow underneath it. So that's the, the kind of thing I'm going for. It's not going to be perfect, and, and my impression here is fairly loose, but uh, hopefully it will make sense, and you want to make use of the edge of this shadowy shape, and, and pretend there are cars there at least. So I'm putting in under every highlight almost that I can see, I'm going to put something like a car or something like that. Um, and as long as we have one or two that read really well, uh, the rest will fall into place. Okay, so this is going to be mainly the bus, by the way. The bus that we have here. That's going to be our main means of really showing um, what these shapes look like. Let me zoom in just a bit. So I said just a bit and I delivered it was really just a little bit. I just wanted to get as close as I can. Uh, so here we go, another car, and it's casting a shadow, and then there's the windshield here. Um, now here you want to mind your shapes a little more to make sure they read well. Here's the bus, uh, shape of the rooftop, around here. Um, now here there's a, this shape it goes in. Then there's a tire or something, and then it goes back out for the cast shadow. So all of these small details, the more you can get them right, the better. Uh, it's not as much as, it's not binary, it's not like you got it or you messed it up. It's more of a, um, uh, what do you call it, I don't know, like it's, it's, there's, it's a spectrum. You can get it more accurately, less accurately, somewhere in the middle. Uh, the, the bus has a bit of a thing going on here on the rooftop. Uh, now here we get to the cars on the left. These are really nice. I want to get them in uh, in an interesting way. And don't worry, I'm going to add some people here. I'm going to add a bunch of things. Uh, but I'm just for now, I'm not even regarding the photo as much because I already have so much to rely on here. So let me zoom in more on this section. So basically, as I was saying, uh, because I have so much information already down on paper, I don't need to rely as much on the reference. I can kind of wing it with what I got on paper, which is a fun stage to be in, really. It's, it's where you can become a little more expressive and have a little more fun. Um, one thing that you want to pay attention to, you know, with all of the impressionism and simplification, and I know I'm not covering it in detail here in this video, I will, I made serious progress with the course, so we are getting there and I will have good information on that. Um, soon with more detail and actually explaining how I simplify but just as a note one of the things that really matter when simplifying is the edges of the shape okay you will be really surprised um, at realizing just how much it's the edges that um, that are responsible for a good simplification so this line around here really helps it's not just within the shapes it's also their edges themselves uh, here's the car now if you can get one or two 
of the objects you're painting clearly, the rest will read well. And you see these two cards, I'm going to put a little more care into them and get some more of their detail in properly. And that will help to establish them and the rest of the objects here as cars. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. And you see I added all sorts of random lines or stripes for cast shadows by different objects of the street. Uh, that can also enhance the, the, the way this looks. Uh, so here we go. These are all just a row of cars. And here we have two cars that are way clearer, so let me move this a bit. Um, and I, I will add some color to them. The car on the right, for example, is distinctly, I don't know, orange or warm. I'm not going to go for the same color, but I will go for a similar... Uh, something that's close to the group. Not, not, not even really close, but just somewhere there. And here's the shape of the back. And this is a good opportunity to do a lot of wet and wets. Um, because it's it's a small area, it's very much under our control. So let me show you in a moment how I do this. And by the way, this building probably missed the, sh the opportunity completely, forgot about it, but let's see if we can get in some details here. So it, it still is a little wet, so it will blend a bit, which is good for us. Um, so I'm just going to put in a couple of those details in. Maybe a couple of random windows in as well. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Uh, here we go, just here. And it just will help a bit. Uh, I could go the other way around and, and, and paint around white highlights, but I didn't want to go through the trouble here, honestly. Uh, in any case, now for the cars here. So this part will be a little darker. This back glass is going to be a little darker. The cast shadow I will make a little darker, but not too much, really. And go over it just a bit, fix up the shape here. I am a bit careless with the shapes, but it's just because I'm having fun. I don't want it to be too tight and, and rigid here. Um, there's these two bars on top of the car. The second car, let's go with a bit of a cooler look to contrast the two. It's a good idea to have this contrast in temperature if it suits the, the scene and if, it, uh, if you can get it to work, you know. It can work in multiple situations, so let's get it even cooler, so more blue. And let these two touch and mix a bit, that's fine. And the cast shadow goes all the way towards the edge of the page, like so. Um, and let's make this a little larger and let's add just a random thing here. I don't know what it is, maybe it's going to be somewhere around here, um, just to justify it. Uh, now within this car we can also add a bit of darker areas, uh, so just keep them neutral. Blue and French ultramarine, a bit of a shadow here in the back, uh, a bit of a shadow here, just a bit, and all the bottom part within the shadow the cast shadow itself are darker. And that's gonna make the car lighter or appear lighter, which will be a really cool look in my opinion. Um, next up, we have some people. Let's put those in. We haven't finished with the entire thing, but we're, because we're in this area, I, I like to give it some time. So here we have a person, head and body. I think it's a woman. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell based on the photo, but I think it's a woman. Um, and one leg's a little longer, the other one's a little shorter, mid-step. There's a cast shadow that goes from this leg and a higher one for the other leg, so that makes sense. There's another person here. And again, with the painting against the light, you get the, the luxury of merging so much of the shapes and getting them to... Uh, to become a little simplified. And I love that kind of effect. You see, it's just simpler. Um, now here in the middle, we actually have two trees. Um, I'm gonna put them in a little darker, just a little darker than their environment. Because they are darker, actually. They're not black, but they're close to that. Uh, so that's a branch, another branch. Notice how much I can get done with just this brush. I don't need anything else, really. Just this, uh, it's a 16 size Skoda Versatile. Um, 
I don't need much more than that. And here we have another tree. So like this. And now for their cast shadows, I'm going to keep it lighter. And cast them over here. Like that. And possibly over the cars and towards us. Okay, just a bit of that. Um, now, there's not a lot of um, vertical elements here, so I'm just going to add a few. It's just random lines, like the trees, same kind of principle. It doesn't have to mean anything, but it, it helps when it's there. Uh, now, uh, what will also help is just a bunch of people, because there's more. So I'm going to put in a person here, a person next to it, maybe a bit of a crowd of people here, all casting it, their shadows towards us. Um, and our brain will know to interpret this. Now I'm gonna put in this dark shape for the... Uh, let's go first with the bottom part here under the balcony. Um, it's not as dark really. Um, a bit of warmth. And we'll just go for it. There's There are a lot of interesting shapes there. So we have this shadow under the line directly, but then there's a bunch of... I don't know if it's like... Uh, just different elements on the balcony. I don't know what you'd call these types of metal pieces and parts, um, but they do amount to some interesting shapes here. So let me get them in. And here this shadow is a bit cooler. So I'm going to add a bit more blue to it like this. And then we have this uh, jagged pattern here. And at this point, it's good to not bother yourself with what it is and just kind of paint it as it is. Uh, I said that if I don't understand it, sometimes I won't paint it, but sometimes it's the other way around, actually. So just a bit of a pattern here to make us realize it's part of the building. Now we're gonna go back up and I'm gonna zoom out. So we don't have much left here. Two things, get this building darker, make it closer, and get some details on the cars and, the, and within the shadow. Okay, like we did here, here as well. Uh, so we're gonna get started with the left section. Um, Wondering if I should make it warm. Let's make it warm. It's closer to us But still keep it fairly dark and probably not as extremely Burnt sienna as I did it here um, Sometimes it's beneficial to not put anything under such a dark wash to not have it show through but uh, it just makes it easier to get it dark uh, Sometimes so I do like to put that in there are a couple of highlights within this shadow. So let's preserve some of them in a more abstract kind of pattern look. Get this detail of the balcony in. Get this shape in. And we're pretty much done with this. So now we know that we're close to this building here on the left. Straighten that line out at this. Um, I want to, let's add a couple of these random elements in and have their shadows cast like that. I don't know why, but it just makes it nicer. Now onto these cars. I'm going to keep it fairly warm as well because it's still close to us. Um, and let's get started and see what we can produce here. Uh, I don't want to go too dark, which is a mistake I very often make. So let's try not to do that. Uh, shadow under the car for both tires. There is a pretty clear distinction between the shadow and the car here, so I'm fine with that. Um, there's this window here and a window there. You see already it starts to build the shape a little clearer. Let me zoom it back in here. This entire car is black or dark, so let me get it to be darker. And then we can just start putting in these darks where we see fit in some of the uh, cast shadows, some of the... Uh, um, glass parts, the glassy parts tend to be a little darker. This bus has a bit of a darker thing going on here and definitely in the cast shadow. So we'll get that going. And you see how it just helps to better define its shape. Uh, it's these small things that really work out nicely. And it has a couple of windows here that are darker. Let's get some of that in. This part should be longer, taller I mean. Um, cars here. There are cars here in the shadow that I can add. Just a bit of a few touches really and you'll get to read this as cars. You don't need much. Um, make some of the 
shadows underneath a little darker. Um, but honestly, with that, there isn't much left. Probably should add a bit of a definition for the sidewalk. We have this weird thing here with the tree. I'm just gonna forget about that. That doesn't exist for me, I don't care. Um, a bunch of vertical lines here in the distance. Um, now, I think the only thing left is to darken some of the people up just a bit. Uh, not too much. Let's keep this warm temperature going. Uh, we'll do this uh, woman here and her cast shadow. You see I'm going over some parts of the figures, not all of them. And that helps to maybe convey that they're wearing a darker uh, darker clothes or something like that. If you look at it up close, you'll see here. See? I uh, hope that makes sense. Let me zoom back out. But uh, quite honestly, with that, uh, we're pretty much done. I do want to put in a couple of dry brush marks on the road itself. I just see it in some areas. See like that? Just helps to better convey the shape of the road here. Like this, should probably get a shadow under this thing, whatever that is, see? Uh, makes it pop. This is fairly um, impressionistic and loose, which is one of the things I like to do more. If you develop it into a larger piece, you can uh, take your time and add some more details, but honestly, I'm very happy uh, with that. So actually, I couldn't resist the temptation to darken some parts very slightly, okay? You just see that some areas here are a little darker, especially near the bottoms of the buildings, this part. So I'm gonna try and get this in a fairly direct and not overworked manner. If I do get it overworked, my apologies. So I'm gonna start with this section. I actually don't mind putting in all of these small details for the trees, you'll see why in a moment. Because what I'll do is use my spray gun just to blend and lighten some of these and also change the angle and not enough water, <laughs> allow it to flow back down. You see, so what you'll get is nothing that's too rigid. And this will also dry a little lighter. Now I could use this opportunity, do the same thing here. You see just some section here are darker and you can't deny that and I think it will make the light pop a little more. So even though I don't want to go overboard here, I do feel like it's my obligation <laughs> to get some of these areas a little darker yet. And this will make the light just, it will capture it a little better, okay? So I'm gonna let this dry for just a couple of seconds and then remove the tape. So here's the final result I got to after removing the tape. Let me show you up close um, all the cars, the small details. Again, this is a rather small size. So for me personally, that's as much of an amount of details um, and realism or impressionism I'll get out of it. If I really want to get more details in, I'll have to use a bit of a larger piece of paper to feel comfortable doing that. Uh, but hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully from afar it has that look and it, it gives you that feeling of if you take a few steps back from the screen, you read everything well and you know what you're looking at and that it just looks good and enjoyable. I love that uh, cool to warm transition, a lot of simplicity in the color palette, uh, which I think works uh, really well. So in any case, now we'll wrap it up face to face. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process as always. Now, one little update, well, two updates. First, um, my free course that I'm working on is I'm getting, making some progress with it. I already have the table of contents. I know exactly what I want to talk about based on the suggestions you gave me. So that's really cool. It's going to be out hopefully within six months. Uh, second update is this painting and all of the other paintings that I recently made hopefully will soon be in my online gallery. I just opened a proper gallery because I've been asked a lot where you can buy the paintings, where can I see the sizes and prices and everything. So I did open a proper gallery and I will start linking it down below. I don't know if it's going to be down here in this one. Probably will start linking it down below. Check it out in the description box. I may have already linked it, but I, it's ready to go and I'm just adding more and more paintings as I go along. So, with that being said, we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next vid. Bye.